As a kid, I spent a lot of time watching shows like How It's Made to gain a better understanding of research and assembly of products that we use in our everyday lives. On my latest trip to London, I had the incredible opportunity to visit the Dyson campus in Malmesbury, England as part of our continued sponsorship. This included an exclusive behind-the-scenes look into their research and product testing facilities, and we also stopped by their London flagship demo store after seeing the level of care and research that occurs behind the scenes before products reach consumers. Throughout my day spent at Dyson, it was amazing to see the work in action firsthand, but even more interesting to see the passion that everyone has for Dyson as a company and its innovation of future products, especially through the discussions that I had with the senior robotics engineer as well as senior designer, both areas that the company has really revolutionized over the years in household products. From the second I stepped in in my steel toe boots, you could tell the company was proud of its history. With a line of prototypes and a haul of products spanning from James Dyson's very first, the bagless vacuum in the 1980s, to the line of better known today in its cordless era, the first model stemmed from sketches and cardboard models that required 5,127 prototypes. The campus itself is divided through a layer of departments, and the ideas stem from this mirror building called NPI known as New Product Ideas. Once the new concepts are brainstormed and James Dyson gives it an approval himself, it moves over to the product development stage. We began our floor care technology tour in the RDD separation lab, where over a quarter million pounds a year is spent just on dust samples alone. This dust is used to collect data of Dyson's filtration systems, and the samples are tested against the products, and the results from the micron test are analyzed and compared down to the smallest particles. From the separation lab, we moved over to the motors lab where we had the chance to look at prototypes at the core of the cordless vacuum systems. The engineers discussed the countless prototypes and microcorrections that continue to improve the products from generation to generation while reducing size. The V11 vacuum, for example, having a 20% power increase and increased battery life from the V10 through aero modifications in the blade. A lot of these changes in the small parts are so detailed that just from looking at the prototypes side by side, you can't actually tell the difference from first sight. Dyson as a company has invested over 350 million pounds in R&D of digital motors since 1999 and has over 240 engineers and 550 active patents in just the motors department alone. The pickup lab is where Dyson tests the vacuum's collection abilities throughout controlled conditions with household surfaces. From solid surfaces to a whole collection of carpets, they test different dust types, speed, and humidity where everything is individually controlled. In this lab, Dyson has a side for testing with worldwide standards as well as North American standards where temperature for each room was different to meet the various regulations. This allows Dyson to make the most accurate product claims when it comes to performance for consumers. In the acoustics lab, Dyson tests the sound levels of vacuums, fans, and hair dryers in order to improve and reduce the acoustic sounds of products that live in your home. With something that is structured like a bank vault or a bunker, with the absorbing sound wedges, the room eliminates reflections down to 100 Hz. The Dyson V11 vacuum, for example, is 20% more powerful but is actually quieter than the previous generation thanks to a piece of specifically created absorbing foam. This room definitely gives like a weird feeling because of how soundproof it is, but the engineer actually mentioned he spent multiple hours at a time in this enclosed space. Moving out of the microbiology lab, this is where components of real house dust and debris are examined for understanding of how the vacuums can better be equipped for things you may find around your house. From the dust mite droppings to allergens that are hidden to the naked eye and found in your carpet and floors and bed. Dyson actually asked me to send a sample from my house a few months ago which has just been through a long renovation and I found that kind of weird, but the reason for that was to be able to analyze and give me a report of what they found in my house. Common things found in these samples include live and dead dust mites, hair as well as skin cells, and other microscopic particles that are all over your house that can affect the air quality. 
But after going from lab to lab and seeing all the work that go into Dyson products and its testing and just how nice a facility is, as well as James Dyson's love for aviation which was evident around the campus, I think the most interesting thing was hearing from people who had been with the company from the beginning. I had the chance to speak with senior robotics engineer Mike Aldred who had been with the company for over 20 years and I want to ask him what kept him excited every day. So you don't stay at a company for 21 years as I have if work's boring and as an engineer what we find boring is things that aren't challenging. I love working at Dyson because all of the challenges set us start off seemingly impossible. But very quickly you work through, you iterate, and it's the excitement of finding out new things. Some things work, some things don't. We're not in an environment where we're penalised for getting things wrong or for failing. We're actually encouraged to try and do things so that we can find out new knowledge. So I think having the privilege of attending Dyson's campus in the UK and being able to see everything go on behind the scenes firsthand, it was really interesting to see the innovation, research and care that goes behind every single product that they make. I've been a user of Dyson products across their lineup for the past few years and knew their products were great and very well engineered, but it was especially interesting to talk to the people behind it who have been with the company for over 20 years. It's one thing to see it on video, but we were extremely lucky to be one of the few people to be able to go behind the scenes and take a look, and I'm really excited to see some of the products they release in the future.